Hello, this is Jay Kilroy. This video is in response to Mr. Pete 222's video number 102 on making tea nuts. Uh, I saw his video, I really enjoyed it. I enjoy all of Mr. Pete's videos, I get a great deal of value from them. And I thought I was going to make some tea nuts, so why not do a little video response? The difference here is I'm going to make tea nuts in my shaper. Nuts for this POS Herco Bridgy clone. We're making T nuts for the slot here on the front of the table. Okay, the machine we're going to be using is my trusty. GE or Gould and Eberhardt 20 inch tool room shaper. Uh, bought this maybe a few years ago and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I had a South Bend 7 inch before this and once I stepped up and uh, got this shaper, a shaper of this size, the South Bend went away. All right, we're going to make some tea nuts. The material we're going to use here is some cutoffs of some uh, 5 8 inch 12 L14. Uh, not always easy to find in square stock, but nice. Now I've got this large tea nut here for illustration purposes. The first dimension we want to get is this dimension here, the width of the actual T portion of the tea nut. Don't worry about your height right now. So I've already taken this piece of square stock and cut it to width to fit the application. And now I'm going to lay out the center line and the height. The next thing to get right is the height of this portion of the T-knot right here. Again, don't worry about this total for the most part right at the moment. Just this portion of the T-knot. All right, I've got my piece marked off here. You probably can't see any of that in the video. Um, got the height of the actual T-nut. Got the center line and the two sides. I don't have to take much off of this, just about a little less than an eighth of an inch. Um, the cutter we're going to use looks like this. Um, I don't know how well that'll show, but uh, it's designed to cut into the workpiece and has a nice has a 90 degree with a nice radius on the bottom. Uh, this is an old piece of tool steel. It says Dreadnought on the side. I wonder just how old this is. Anyway, this piece right here is just a holder. It's a piece of uh, steel with a little uh, groove cut out of it with a little wedge action to it so that uh, it's big enough for the piece of uh, tool steel to actually fit the tool post in the shaper, which is much larger than this. So this is the actual width of shaper tool post. And this is only a half inch wide piece of tool steel. So I had to make this little adapter and it's just a little piece of junk to uh, serve that purpose. piece has been mounted here in the shaper uh, securely. The device is kind of tall so I have to use two sets of parallels uh, to get the uh, work piece at the right level. Uh, we're going to take basically one cut down each side to make the thin piece of the T-nut here. We're going to be going down 
three eighths of an inch down each side and we're going to be taking it all in one pass um, you know make sure everything's tight um, make sure your workpiece is securely clamped in the vise make sure that your tool bit is securely clamped in the tool post make sure that everything is snug because a shaper like this will push this workpiece straight out on the floor or at you or at somebody standing around so make sure everything's mounted up and uh, let's get ready to cut some metal. Alright here we are, shaper's running again, we swapped the piece around 180 degrees, we cut down this side, we're getting ready to cart it but we've got to finish the cut here on this side and uh, just for some information we're running about oh, we're running about 22 strokes a minute uh, the stroke length of about a foot and uh, if anybody wants to figure out the surface you might guess there's a little chart over here on the side that tells you all that. We can do this faster but um, this is comfortable uh, it's easy to keep up with and uh, you know a shaper isn't a machine you use when you're in a hurry We're going to do a little cleaning here and check our depth of cut. Still got about an eighth of an inch to go. Replenish our cutting oil and get back with it. I'm going to check the work, a little couple more strokes.
One of the things you might notice here is that I'm working with very little room between the clapper, the tool post, and the workpiece. The shaper is just like any other machine. The less distance between your tool holding and your work holding, the more rigidity. And the better the machine works, the better your surface finish, the less drama, uh, all in all, just much more improvement. A lot of people use uh, traditional tool holders and these tool posts, which puts your uh, puts a lot of distance between your cutter and your workpiece, and I don't see any need for that. So I'm going to measure this up and uh, figure out what we need to do next. All right, I've done some checking here, and uh, this portion of the T-nut's fine. Our depth here on both sides is fine. This is excellent. Uh, everything fits good. Our total height, this is the last dimension we have to worry about, our total height here is about a hundred thou too high. I need to take about a hundred thou off the bottom here for this T-nut to fit. So what we're going to do now, the reason we've saved this dimension to last is because uh, this is the easy cut, doing it this way. Take our parallels out. Told you I had to use two sets, right? Take the T-nut, swap it over, drop it in the groove right here upside down, just using the, the um, shape you just cut as your parallel, basically. And then we're just going to set the shaper up and take a big cut right across the bottom here. Set back up here for our second, what's probably our last cut. Knocking off about 50 thou here. Um, about a 10 thou cross feed. Uh, that's as fine a cross feed as I've got. Um, the machine, of course, is capable of taking a lot more aggressive cut than this, but like I said, I Shaper's not a machine you use when you're in a hurry. And I don't want to stick a chip in the lens anyway, so we'll let her finish up here. Alright, here we are. Uh, we've made all the cuts we're going to make. Uh, we trimmed a bunch off the bottom there, as you can see. See if I can get up close. You can see that finish. That wonderful finish you get there. Uh, so this piece of uh, basically T-nut stock is ready to go. We're going to try it out here. And there we are. Uh, take this piece here out. And I will drill it and tap it and cut it and end up with oh shoot probably six or eight t-nuts something this size this length and uh, we'll be ready to go of course t-nut project is about the perfect project for a shaper uh, I mean, this is a fabulous starter shaper project if you're looking for one making t-nuts for cross slides for 
lathes is a great project this is a great project and um, it's a lot of fun and uh, you know I enjoy playing with the old tools so anyway again this is uh, Jay Kilroy responding to Mr. Pete's uh, video number 102 on making tea nuts and uh, I hope you enjoyed it